Hi, and welcome to this session. My name is Stephanie, and today I want to show you how to use 2D sketching in size reverse engineering. We'll reconstruct a small die plate, which appears to be made up of freeform surfaces. But thanks to 2D sketching, we can use standard geometries, which makes it easier to adapt. Let me show you how it works. I'll use a project that contains a scanned mesh. That's actually one of the big advantages of Zeiss Reverse Engineering. It supports the import of mesh files. The mesh is aligned and I've prepared a few auxiliary elements. Two planes, which we'll use to extrude the bodies we'll create, a bounding box to reconstruct the bottom of this part, and two sketching planes. I want to show you two different approaches to 2D sketching in ZRE, the auto sketching feature and an option to sketch manually. In both cases, we'll use a polyline as a starting point. To create the polylines, we'll intersect the two sketching planes with the mesh. Open create with elements, Boolean operations, intersect plane with mesh. Click the mesh to select it. Then select intersection planes in the function dialog. To select the two planes, use control and the left mouse button. As target element type, use polyline. From here, you can jump directly to the next function we need. Just click run and split directly into lines, circle segments. ZRE creates the two polylines, displays them exclusively in the cat window and opens the function split elements into lines, circle segments. This is where the auto sketching in ZRE starts. First, we'll separate the polyline into lines and arcs. To do that, simply select the polyline in the cat window. The software then computes the lines and circle segments based on the settings in the function dialog. Let's hide the polyline to see better. The blue segments are lines, the purple ones are arcs. If you want to decrease the number of segments, increase the split tolerance, either by using the mouse wheel or entering a value. You can also connect segments manually by using Ctrl and the left mouse button and drawing a rectangle over the two segments you want to unite. For more information about the mouse commands for this function, open the tooltip here. As you can see, you can also change the segment type by clicking on it. And down here, you could apply constraints for the sketch automatically. I could define the constraints tangential and parallel, for example. But I want to show you how to do that with 2D sketching, so I'll deactivate define constraints automatically. When you're happy with your results, click Create Sketch. CRE creates a new sketch and opens the edit function under sketching so we can continue seamlessly. Let's define the constraints. I want all segments to be tangential. To define the constraint, use the left mouse button and select two adjacent segments. Then apply the constraint tangential either by selecting it in the function dialog or by using the keyboard shortcut T. I'll use the keyboard shortcut T to be quicker. The software shows the applied constraints with little symbols beside the segment. To see which segments are constrained, hover over the symbol and ZRE highlights the respective segments. You'll also notice that the segments move a bit to fulfill the tangential constraint. Next, let's set the lines parallel. I'll set all the lines in the sketch parallel using the keyboard shortcut P. And I'll set the lines parallel to the respective axis of the coordinate system. To do that, simply select the line in the sketch and the dashed line representing the axis of the coordinate system and press P. Now I have to find all the constraints for my sketch. If you need to delete a constraint, select the symbol in the cat window and press delete. If this doesn't work, a selection in the sketching dialog is likely active. Press Escape to deactivate it and try again. On a side note, you don't have to fully constrain your sketch. 
That depends on your application. You could also create a sheet body or if the input is an open sketch, a wire body. The last step is to adjust the dimensions. Thanks to 2D sketching, that's super easy. If you want to make significant changes, increase the width here for example, you can select the segment and drag it to the new position. To undo changes, simply use Ctrl Z. To set precise values, activate dimensions in the function dialog. To change the size of an element, say the length of this line, select it, drag the label to wherever you want it, and enter a value. If you wanted to find distances, you need to select both elements. Select the line here, for example. To define the distance, click on the second line over here. The arrow then indicates the distance you're defining. Move to wherever you want to place the label and place it by clicking the left mouse button. Enter the value for the distance and you're done. This process is super fast. I only broke it down to clarify the mouse commands. Feel free to try it yourself. If you want to change a value, simply double click the label or the element. If you want to change the position of the labels, deactivate the selection for dimension with escape. Then you can use shift and the left mouse button to move them. For more information about the different mouse commands, open the tooltip. You may have noticed that the lines in our sketch changed color. When an element is green, it's perfectly defined. Once that's the case, you're no longer able to move the element. As opposed to yellow elements like this fillet, which you can adjust. If an element is red, that means that it is over constrained. The software highlights the respective labels in red as well. This makes it easy to choose and delete constraints. Now let's define the radii. Make sure the selection under dimensions is active. Select the radius you want to define. Place the label and enter the value. Let's repeat this for the remaining radii. And we're done. As you can see, everything is green, which means the shape is perfectly defined. That's not a must, by the way. If you want, you can take a snapshot for reporting purposes. The last step is to create a sheet body. To do that, click Create Body Wire. Then close the function. You can find the sheet body in the Model Explorer under Bodies. Before we extrude the sheet body to create the cat model of our part, I'll show you the manual sketching feature in Xeri. To do that, we'll use the second polyline we created at the start. To create a new sketch, click Creation under Sketching. As you can see here, you need a sketch plane. ZRE suggests using the Z plane of the coordinate system. But since I have a sketching plane in my project, I'll select it in the Model Explorer. Click Create Sketch. Use the different tools under Features to trace the polyline, or if you're creating a sketch from scratch, start drawing. I'll start with the line here. You can select line in the function dialog or use the keyboard shortcut L. Use the left mouse button to define the start and end point. To create arcs, switch to the circle segment tool. You can select it in the dialog or use the keyboard shortcut A. Because I want to create a continuous shape, I click the end point of the line as the start point of the arc. Define the end point of the arc and a third point for the radius. Don't worry if you forget to connect the elements when you're creating them. You can snap them together later. Just remember to close the feature construction with Escape. Then you can edit existing shapes. For more information, take a look at the tooltip here. Continue tracing the polyline. Once you're done, press Escape to deactivate the element creation. 
you can now define constraints. To make the selection easier, hide the polyline. I'll apply the constraint tangential to all the elements. To do that, select two adjacent elements and use the keyboard shortcut T. Next, let's define the radii for these two arcs. Click Dimension or use the keyboard shortcut D. Select the arc, place the label by clicking the left mouse button, and enter the value. Repeat that for the second arc, and we're done. Create a sheet body, and let's finalize the cat body. We can now use extrusion or sweeping to finish the cat body. I'll extrude the two sheet bodies we created with 2D sketching. Show the three bodies, meaning the bounding box, and two sheet bodies in the cat window. In the action bar, open Create with Elements, Solid Body, Body by Extrusion. Let's start with this sheet body. Select it. Use the blue handles to extrude the shape in both directions. To mark the length of this middle body, I prepared an auxiliary plane in the project called Middle Plane. I'll display it to help determine the length on top. Go through the plane. Then activate the option Positive Boundary Body Surface and select the auxiliary plane. Click Execute. Let's do the same for the second sheet body on top. Select it. Display the second auxiliary plane called Top Plane. Make sure the extruded body goes through the plane and set the plane as positive boundary surface. Then click Execute and Close. Now you can unite the bodies. And last but not least, create fillets. And here's the finished cat body created with 2D sketching. If you're reverse engineering parts that require a modeling approach, give 2D sketching a try. It'll speed up your workflow significantly because it's much easier to adapt elements of your CAD model to fit specifications. If you're anything like our experts, I'm sure you'll like it. If you're new to Zeiss reverse engineering, take a look at our starter guide on YouTube or head to the training center. For more hacks and tutorials, check out our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. See you next time.